Thanks, Mace. Hi, everybody. Good to be with you. Nice to see people in the room and in the Zoom room. So I um, I have a little announcement. I need to um, I need to make this class an hour long tonight. I'm sorry to do that. I hope it's okay for everybody. My book is due tomorrow morning. <laughs> And I probably won't sleep tonight. <laughs> so I'm also dealing with um, some health issues. So I figured to meet in the middle somehow, if I could just shorten the class by a half hour and make things feel more manageable. So I apologize for people if that's a letdown. I've never done this before. And hopefully I will never do it again. Um, normally I want to respect your time coming out in person and so on. But um, perhaps even in the in the space or even in the Zoom room, people could stay on and have a, a sharing if they want to. But um, that's the best as I can do tonight. I have to take care of, of certain things. So thanks, everybody, for your understanding. I appreciate it. I've been working on this book, uh, researching it since 2019, writing it for two years. And literally, it's all coming to a head right now. <laughs> and it's due tomorrow. So uh, it's 400 pages long. Uh, I have a lot of editing to do. And it's feeling really good to see the light at the end of the tunnel. And I will start to be able to come to the collective in person, which makes me very happy. And probably in the new year. And so I sleep is sacred. Thanks, Denise. Yeah, at least 20 minutes sleep. I'll sleep. I'll definitely sleep, maybe four hours, but <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how it goes. And um, I thought I'd talk a little bit about, about my book um, content. I'll talk a little bit about it in light of uh, meditation that I want to guide with you tonight. And then we'll sit and then we'll see how, we'll see how much time afterwards I might have to, to uh, bow out and let you all uh, have community circle, have community time, if that's what you want to do. So um, the book I'm writing is on women in Buddhist Tantra, and it's been a passion of mine for, for a good, since my early 20s. So, you know, what is that, almost 30 years. And I have thought about writing a book for a long time, I finally got the guts to do it. And it's been a really maturing great experience in particular the, the topic is the 21 taras the 21 manifestations of the divine feminine within buddhist tantra some of you are probably aware of tara green tara white tara red tara those are the three popular ones white taras like a longevity or immortality practice um, red taras about transmuting um craving and yeah craving in particular magnetizing uh, all that is beneficial in the world green tara is um, the most popular she's considered like the queen of all the tatas who reigns over all the 21 tata pantheon and she is associated with saving beings from fear and suffering that comes from fear and danger and it's a fascinating topic because you know, while they say they're 21, really, the Dada is limitless. She is as infinite as the stars in the sky. In fact, her name means star, Dada means star. And in other contexts, primarily, her name means a savioress. Um, her name is, it comes from the Sanskrit root, uh, T-R, Tur, and it means to save, to protect, not protect is a secondary meaning, actually, to save is the primary. And um, meaning that she saves beings from the ocean of samsara, ferries them across the ocean of samsara from one shore to the next, meaning liberation, the other shore, the far shore is always the metaphor for um buddhahood actually uh, an epithet for the buddha is the thus gone one which literally means the one who's gone to the other shore tathagata tathagata means the thus gone one or the one who's gone to the other shore and so tara is an expression of that capacity or at least the reason why people through beginningless time have prayed to deities prayed to a god prayed to the divine whatever that means to them is this feeling of, um, you know, wanting to be saved, 
but we're, if you're Buddhist, you're looking at things from a non-dual lens usually, which means that ultimately there is not a Buddha or a deity out there to come and save you. Uh, ultimately, there's actually not a you here to be saved. <laughs> that under meditative analysis, investigation, insight, vipassana means deep insight or special insight, we realize that we are uh, appearing yet empty. But we appear, but we are empty of intrinsic existence, just like the deities. Self, empty. Buddha, empty. Deity, empty. That uh, we come to the practice of prayer and calling out for help. Yes, because we're human and we need that. And it's helpful. Believe me, I've done it. I think that many, many of Dharma practitioners have and people from all different faiths have or no faith but um, if you're Buddhist you also hold in mind keep in mind that there is no deity out there to come save you there is nobody here who needs to be saved it's it's pretty maverick it's it's maybe not very comforting <laughs> for some people but for other people it might be extremely comforting like oh no self, no problem. <laughs> no ego, no one to defend, no one to save, no one to suffer. But we do suffer. We do want to be safe from danger because we live in a, rea a relative reality. But on an ultimate reality, my mind is none other than the, than the deity's mind. Your mind is none other than the enlightened mind of all the Buddhas of the past, present, and future. So in that vein, uh, there's prayer, there's a practice called deity yoga, which is very common. It's a very important vehicle in uh, Mahayana, but mainly Vajrayana Buddhism, which is um, what you find in t Tibetan Buddhism. It's tantric by nature. So you have mantra recitation, visualization, chakras, yogas. Um, mandala work, visualization of mandalas, and, and so on, as well as meditation. And Tantra, whether it's Hindu or Buddhist, is all about alchemy. So we're using the mind to transform the mind. We are an alchemical vessel. So yes, the, there are meditative techniques where we empty the mind, we release distraction, we engage in what's called non-discursive meditations, certain forms of shamatha are non-discursive, where we're, again, letting the mind quiet and get empty. But there are also practices that are helpful as well that fall within the category of discursive meditation, where we use the mind to transform the mind. We've been doing that in our book study of the Boundless Healing book that we've been doing. We won't do tonight, but we have been doing, at least with my talks and practices, I've been leading us through this the book. I know that Eve is doing different work because she feels more comfortable doing that, which is fine. Um, but for those of you who are familiar uh, with our book study themes, we are doing this book, Boundless Healing. And in this book, there are all sorts of very interesting ways that we use the mind to transform the mind. We Last time we visualized uh, light in our cells. Uh, the time before that, we visualized kind of a body scan moving through the body and uh, relishing in the, the, the brilliant systems of circulation and organ health and so on as a way to cultivate a greater sense of healing and focus in the mind. So all of those are techniques where we use the mind to transform the heart mind, transform the body. Donglen, we use the active imagination, visualizing light, visualizing smoky vapor, visualizing loved ones, enemies, neutral people, the world, and so on. The imagination is so vast that, in a sense, the sky is the limit when we visualize things, when we imagine them, or we even feel them, bring about feelings of light or warmth or sound as we make sounds. 
So all of these are called discursive forms of meditation. And deity yoga is one of them where we do mantra, we visualize ourselves as the deity, we embody the energy of the deity, what would it be like to be a body of light and um, say mantra and imagine sending light from our bodies, our hearts to all beings. Imagine receiving light from the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. Um, yeah, so these are all different ways to to heal the mind and heart and develop concentration and understand the, um, in a sense, the uh, incomprehensible, you know, move closer to coming home to our nature, our true nature as divine. The nature of mind is divine. The ultimate, you know, the, the true nature of mind is free of sorrow, it's free of suffering, and in that way it's divine. Um, we suffer though because we have the, the karmas, the habitual patterns and kleshas, they're called uh, mental afflictions or however you want to translate that, sometimes called the five poisons, these qualities of like anger or aversion or pride or arrogance or clinging and fixation and jealousy these things cloud the sun that's always shining they don't change the sun but they cause sorrow they cause suffering but when you drop beneath that you come to that ever shining luminosity that divine mind and that's the ultimate so-called deity and that's the whole point of uh, deity yoga is to unify, to yoke, the yuj, which is the Indo-European root of yoga, yuj, same as our yoking, we yoke our mind with the divine mind, with the awakened mind, and realize that we've never been separate from that. So I would like to guide you through a simple-ish experience of this practice of so-called deity yoga. Uh, Tibetan is called Lame Naljor. Uh, Lama is um, Lame La, Naljor. Well, that's Guru Yoga, actually, not Deity Yoga. That's different. That's similar, actually, but different, where we actually you pray to a, a teacher as Buddha. But that's not what we'll do. The Lai, Lai Naljor. La is God or deity. And I'm not talking about God in the Judeo-Christian sense of the word, or even the polyistic type, um, you know, Shiva, Shakti, Krishna, Hanuman, idea of gods. When we say deity or la in Tibetan, it's that kind of archetypal expression of the divine mind. So la yi is of gods, and then naujor is yoga. So it's so la yi naujor is the deity yoga. So... Uh, let's go ahead and uh, make a comfortable seat, and we will do the the deity yoga with Dada, this uh, female Buddha of compassion. Uh, maybe we'll sit for about 35 minutes, so make sure you're comfortable, and you can sit in a chair on the floor, and we're going to begin with some breathing, some relaxation breaths, and then some gentle vase breath breathing. I've taught this before. Well, maybe you remember this, and it's a way to cultivate longevity, um, build the prana in the body, feel better, and uh, stabilize the mind. This is called the gentle vase breath. So we'll do some relaxation breaths, and we'll spend some time with this gentle vase breath, and then we'll enter into a, a very streamlined experience of deity yoga with Dada. Okay. So allow the eyes to close. And take some deep breaths. And feel yourself coming into the moment, into the body with the breath. So 
Feel the spine aligned with gravity. Let the chin come in towards the center of the throat slightly to let the back of the neck elongate. Release the shoulders down the back, shoulder blades down the back. The chest is slightly lifted, a buoyant feeling in the heart space. And let that open up the funnel down through the solar plexus, down into the belly. As the breath fills the body, filling the abdomen metaphorically with breath. With the out breath, the navel draws in slightly, the solar plexus lifts up a bit, letting the air exit through the nose or mouth. Keep breathing like this, filling in with the in breath and releasing out with the out breath. The tip of the tongue resting on the upper palate, right at the root of the top front teeth. The facial muscles relaxed, the jaw relaxed. The hands resting on the thighs, palms down. The hips and legs in a comfortable position. If you're in a chair, feet nice and square on the floor. And the pelvis nice and even like a fish bowl without spilling the water. It's nice and level. The bowl of the pelvis. Sits bones rooted on the seat. And we'll begin with nine relaxation breaths. With the next few breaths, breathing naturally into any physical tension that you may feel in your body. Hooking it with the in-breath and with the out-breath, release and let that physical tension melt down into the earth beneath you. And then with the next few breaths, breathing into any emotional tension, any feelings that are held in the body. Breathe into that, hooking it with the breath, release with the out breath. Feel emotional tension softening and melting down into the earth beneath you. And then with the next few breaths, breathe into any mental tension, feeling any worries or thoughts where you hold them in your body, tension. Looking with the breath, releasing, melting down into the earth beneath you with the out breath. Releasing mental tension, worries, concerns, Distractions, releasing. And now let this flow into a natural, gentle vase breath. Where we're slowing down the length of the in-breath. We're holding with the breath in for a bit. And then slowly exhaling. The breath out. 
a little note on the technique here. As you inhale, you feel the breath filling the torso like a water filling a vase. And then when you come to the top of the breath, you hold it in. I'll invite you to lower the chin to kind of create a chin lock or a root um, throat lock. And then you'll relax the belly out like a beach balloon, um, beach ball. But not just the front, also the back, the kidneys soften back and down. The whole belt line is loose and filled with breath. And while you're doing that, then you'll also, the third part, is feel like you're lifting the lower doors. That's the lower orifices. They're called the, the lower doors, the gateways that energy leaks. And so you're going to slightly lift up at the perineal floor like you're trying not to pee. That slight lift, very subtle. You can even try it. A little lift, like a tingling sensation as you lift, and that's closing the lower doors. So all of that's happening while you're holding the breath in, and it's a way to pack the prana, the energy, in the hara, the navel center region. Yeah, and you relax the mind, don't stress, don't strain, and then we'll exhale, and then you'll let that breath leave the body like water pouring out of a pitcher. Mm -hmm. And instead of exhaling completely, when you're about 10 to 30% empty, you turn back around and fill that vase back up again. And we continue like that with the retention and then the almost complete exhalation. Feeling is that you're building the prana at the navel center. Okay, so we'll do this for a few minutes. And I'll count and guide for a little bit, and then I'll kind of ease out so you can find your own rhythm. Let's all take an in-breath together and then exhale naturally, completely. And then slowly inhale, filling the torso from the base to the top. When you're full, hold the breath in. Drop the chin a little bit for the root throat lock. Relax the belly and the belt line out and soft. Then lift at the perineal floor. Holding the breath. Almost relax the mind down into the navel area. And then slowly now start to exhale. Smooth like silk, so don't spit the air out. Let it be smooth. Before you're completely empty, filling back in, I'll count five, two, three, four, five. Holding, chin, belly softens, lift at the perineal floor, three, four, five. Then exhale, slowly pouring the water out. Three, four, five. Before you're completely empty, inhale again. One, two, three, four, five. Holding in. Two, three, four. Five, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, inhaling, one, two, three, four, five, hold in, one, two, three, four, five. Exhale, two. A note on the retention if it's feeling too complicated for you to lift the perineal floor or do the chin and the belly. All you have to do is hold the breath in. Inhale, one, two, three, four, five. Holding, one, two. Relax the mind, 
three, four, five, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, inhale, one, two, three, four, five, holding in, two, three, four, five, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, inhale, two, three, four, five, hold in, relaxed, chin, belly, perineum, four, five, exhale, two, three, four, five, keep going now, but at your own pace, maybe that's too fast for you, then hold six counts, seven counts, eight counts, or maybe it's too slow, do four or three counts each. We'll spend another minute or two with our own breath. Keep practice, relax the mind and the body. Go at your own pace. Last cycle. And then release control of the breath. Now we'll enter into the main part of the practice. Let's take a moment to arouse our motivation, our heartfelt bodhicitta, spirit of awakening for the benefit of self and others. If you wish, you can take the bodhicitta mudra 
single pointed intention, two middle fingers pointing up. And let that be the language of the heart, heart's prayer. And then releasing hands back to the thighs. Let the breath be natural in the body. Just feeling the natural in and out flow of the breath. This soothing anchor of the breath is always there with you. Soothing you into more spaciousness. Soothing the nervous system into a quality of of calm, of warmth, of ease, relaxation. Any last wrinkle of strain or tightness starts to iron out with each outbreath. And in this, in a sense, experimental space of the boundless capacity of the imagination, the mind, we'll enter into the next phase of practice with a quality of curiosity, of openness, to feel what it's like to practice from the premise of the nature of mind being divine, that the core of our being is, is perfect just as it is, is already complete, is free of sorrow, and in fact, is a wellspring of joy and the ultimate satisfaction that we long for. It's all there within us. That is taking the fruit as the seed. The premise of our practice is that we're already perfect, that the fruit is already within the seed. And yet, because we are human and we have our veils, we can do the dance of deity yoga as a coaxing, as a warm-up to the feeling and experience of union with the nature of mind as divine. And one way to do this is to develop the heart, faith, devotion, that warmth that comes from devotion to something higher, something vaster than what we're used to. And in this context, we'll open to this quality of the, the divine as, a, as like a feminine force within the world, the universe, within us, around us the unconditional love of a mother, the universal mother, the Devi, the great mother. And 
And we can feel her as warmth like the sun. You can even imagine luminosity in the space above and slightly in front of you like a sun. You can even imagine more like a being of light, like a Buddha, Buddha Tara. And tonight, in the spirit of longevity, long life, because of the practices we've been doing of health and longevity, we'll pray to the white Tara, who's actually like a crystal clear luminosity, or a crystal white, if you will crystalline white light a body of light a being of light you can imagine like a Buddha figure Tara in front of you or even just feel an orb of luminous loving light she has one face smiling, peaceful, loving disposition Two arms, two legs sitting on a moon disc upon a lotus flower. Her right leg is slightly stepping forward into samsara. Her left leg is slightly tucked in near her perineum like half lotus, symbolizing fully stabilized within the samadhi of nirvana. So she holds samsara and nirvana within her. She's swaying. She's not static. She's joyful and benevolent, glowing a body of light. And feel her in the space above and slightly in front of you. Or in front of you and slightly above you, like three arms lengths in front and above the crown of your head, appearing in space like a rainbow in the sky. You can even see the whites of her eyes. Imagine what she would look like if she was gazing upon you with care, with love. And feel the heartstrings tugging this longing, this love and faith that somehow there is benevolence out there and that she's an embodiment of it for you. And acknowledging that you, like all beings, are foundering in the ocean of samsara. We suffer. We need help sometimes. We come to her with a sense of beseeching for her to give you refuge and witness your practice, support you in your practice, bless you in your practice. You could even say out loud or silently to yourself, Tara, please bless me. Make a personal prayer. What do you need? Please heal me. Help me see the light. Help me feel the love around me. Make your own personal prayer. Oh, Tara, please. Bestow your blessings and empowerments upon me. And upon hearing your heartfelt prayer, she joyfully beams light, rainbow-colored light, from her heart into your heart your heart chakra, blessing you. Feel that rainbow light fills your body. 
filling every cell of your body, luminous, rainbow light filling your body, blessing you and cleansing you of sickness, conflict, obstacles, negative karmas. Feel that rainbow light in a sense, internally washing you free of all impurities. With her loving light, she, in a sense, burns away with her light all of those impurities, making you a suitable vessel. And in one final blast of light, she explodes into blissful light. And that light dissolves into you, fully blessing you. And she merges into you. And then you, recognizing the non-duality of your mind with the deity's mind. Arise as Tata now. Your normal form transforms into a body of white, crystal clear light. No longer a body of flesh and bone, but now a body of luminous white light hollow like a balloon. And at the center of your heart is a little seed syllable. Tam, T-A-M, made of light, written so finely as if it were written with a single hair. And that Tam is standing upright, you can imagine in English, on a little moon disk within an orb of white light in the center of your heart chakra, right in the center of your sternum. And that thumb is emanating light throughout your body, the body of Tata. One face, two arms, two legs. You're seated on a moon disk upon a lotus flower. Your right leg is slightly stepping forward into samsara to be of benefit to beings, to come to their aid, fulfilling your bodhisattva vow. You can actually take that gesture or posture or just imagine it. Right leg slightly forward. The left leg is tucked in near the perineum, the heel near the perineum, symbolizing that you're fully stabilized in nirvana. Liberation, samadhi. And you can imagine that your right hand is on the right knee, on your right knee, palm up, in the mudra of supreme generosity, meaning you're giving the gift of dharma, you're giving the gift of protection. And then you can imagine that your left hand is at your heart in the mudra of the three jewels. If you want to look at me, you can. The thumb and ring finger are gently touching, and the other three fingers are fanning upwards. That's the mudra of the three jewels of Buddha, Dharma, and Sangha. And imagine that held between the thumb and the index, the ring finger of your left hand, is a stem of her lotus flower that grows up and blooms above your left shoulder symbolizes the capacity of our minds to awaken and bloom like the lotus.
Really feel yourself as Tara, as a body of light. And feel as if with your three eyes, your two regular eyes and your third eye, you can see the whole universe and the suffering and the joys of all the beings in samsara. And that you have this sincere desire to help and heal, bestowing the blessings of light, longevity, healing, the enlightened activities of the white Tara. And as we chant her mantra, you'll imagine that rainbow light emanates from that tam at your heart in all directions, blanketing, filling all of space and blanketing the world, offering beings what they need to be fulfilled, to be healed in the form of rainbow-colored light. We'll chant a simple version of her mantra, simply Om Namo Arya Tara, meaning Om, I honor noble Tara. And as we chant together, don't be shy if you're in the room with others. You can chant in a quiet, meditative way. Listen to the room and really blend your voices together for those of you who are in the space together. I'll offer the melody. It's simple. Listen to the rhythm. There's a moment where you breathe in with the rhythm. And imagine the rainbow light emanating from your heart as Tara to all beings everywhere as we chant. Om Namo Arya Tara 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 
filling all of space, transforming all negativity, all obstacles, all illness, disease, the liberated energy. And then imagine now that the world and all of its inhabitants dissolve into luminous, radiant, blissful light. And that light dissolves into you as Tata. And feel that like an empowerment and a blessing and fusion of light filling you. And then you also dissolve from the crown of your head and the soles of your feet, slowly begin to dissolve into light, converging, converging slowly, dissolving from the crown and the soles of the feet simultaneously towards the heart space. Dissolving into that orb of light at your heart. And then that orb of light dissolving into the moon disk. And then the moon disk dissolving into that finely written hum seed syllable until that's all that remains. Just 
And then that tam also dissolving from the base, simultaneously dissolving the top. until the tam dissolves into utter sheer emptiness. Like a bubble popping, everything dissolves back into the fabric of space and then rest in the experience of unbound awareness all-pervasive, free of center, free of periphery. Mix awareness with space. Releasing distraction, releasing grasping. Let the mind settle in its natural state. Spacious, luminous, wakeful. And then slowly begin to come back, come back into your body. Re-emerging, feeling the breath in the body, feel the clothes upon your skin. Feel the heartbeat, circulation. And yet recalling the feeling of the energy of Tara within you. Remembering that the nature of your mind is none other than the nature of Tara, the nature of the Buddha mind. A luminous sun that's always shining within you. It's always there. And it's from this space that we dedicate the merit of our practice. If you wish, bring your hands together in prayer. A sincere wish that any benefit gained through this practice be dedicated for the benefit of all beings. Like a drop of water releasing into the vast ocean, it becomes limitless. May this positive energy be limitless. If you wish, take a moment to make any personal prayers for yourself, for your family, friends, community, the world. And then when you're ready, slowly open your eyes and come back.
Well, thank you, everybody. Yes, thanks, Denise. I got your, your, your loving note and you're right. Sleep is good. So I'm going to just say, encourage you to, I don't know what you want to do. Maybe Mace could be a moderator in the room or people can go if they want to, but I'm going to leave you now. And But this is a good opportunity for peer-to-peer -peer sharing. We learn from our peers better than we learn from a didactic teacher. So I hope this feels like a fresh opportunity to maybe share in the room how that was for you. I'm, questions I would be interested, maybe, you know, guiding questions for discussion might be, uh, how did it feel to embody Tara? How did it feel going from duality, deity out there, praying to Tara? How did that feel? And then how did it feel to merge your mind with Tara and actually become her. So when we do mantra as a deity, we're enacting their enlightened activities, right? It's more powerful when we visualize ourselves as the deity. So in, instead of normal Chandra saying, may all beings be free of suffering, if I imagine I'm Tara and I take my seat as Buddha Tara and I make those prayers, they're more powerful. So we're enacting the enlightened activities by imagining ourselves as the deity, reciting the mantra, imagining the light rays going out to all beings, bringing liberation, enacting those enlightened activities. So how did that feel for you? Embodiment, meditation as discursive, mind transforming the mind, embodying the deity. And then take it from there. Yeah, people can share what they want. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Mace, Jason, Noam, Cage, everybody for your practice. Uh, Eve will be with you next week. And I'll see you again soon. I'll be on the other side of this book when I see you next. Thanks for your understanding, everybody. Big love to you. Take care. <laughs>